Today I'm going to make a set of file handles and a place to organize them. I'm Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit channel. So I started with checking out my wood scrap drawer to see what I could find. I picked up this needle file set and figured this would be perfect to make handles for. I wanted all different kinds of woods for the handles, so just seeing how long I want them, and then I set up a stop block. So all together, here I have English Walnut, Purple Heart, Maple Burl, Clara Walnut, Cherry, and Ipei. Then preparing the blocks and drilling an eighth inch hole for the file to go into later. Okay, let's do some turning. I started with cherry, which of course is a fruit wood. This is black cherry, which grows in Eastern North America mainly, and it's pretty soft, 950 on the Janka hardness scale, and uh, very easy to turn. Here I was getting a feel for what shape in general I wanted to replicate for all the other handles. English walnut next, also called common walnut, which generally is a little lighter in color than black walnut. English walnut is grown in a lot of places, but primarily Eastern Europe and Western Asia, and it measures 1,220, so a touch harder than the cherry. It's also really nice to turn, and I like the lighter color. Then maple burl, and this is big leaf maple, which grows near the Pacific coast from southern Alaska to southern California, and measures 850. However, this is from a piece of burl, which is why it has such an interesting swirly look. A burl is like an outgrowth on the tree trunk that's filled with small knots, and I think the burl makes it a lot harder, and a little tricky to turn, I thought. Which makes sense, because burls in general have all kinds of twists and turns and growth in different directions. It is a beautiful piece of wood, though. After that, Clara Walnut, which grows in California and Oregon, and measures 1130 on the scale. And it's a wood I really enjoy turning. And it has a nice dark color. <laughs> okay, so after the North American hardwoods, I went a little harder, starting with Ipe, which grows in Central America and a little south of that, and measures 3510. Now, there are several different kinds of ipe. This piece is actually a lot harder than a different variety of ipe which I've turned in the past. In general, I thought it turned pretty nicely, though. Uh, a little dry and splintery, but not too bad. I continue the tropical route and put on the purple heart last. Purple heart grows in Central and South America and measures 2520 on the Jenka hardness scale. It turned pretty nicely, however, it is very, very dense. I find it just amazing how different it is to turn the softer woods, like walnut and cherry, compared to the harder tropical woods. The harder woods, they just take a lot longer to bring down to size. And of course, they're a lot tougher on your tools as well. After that, I thought it might be kind of fun to integrate some carving, so just testing it out on the cherry here. To get ready to carve all the other handles, I first need to sharpen my carving knife. I'm simply using a small hard Arkansas stone here, adding some oil, and then carefully finding the angle and moving the knife back and forth on both sides. Then I finished it on the strop. And yeah, the knife felt a lot sharper after that. So I was really curious how the different woods would carve. I started with the cherry, and this is what the tree and of course the fruit looks like. It was great to carve, and yeah, I'd carve cherry any day. 
I wanted to integrate a faceted type of design on the end of the handle to give it a little more grip while also looking nice. Doing the walnuts, the English and the claro. And the English variety is the kind that produces the nuts we're used to. One interesting note is that sometimes they graft English walnut on top of Clara walnut in order to get the superior walnuts from the English variety along with the superior rootstock from the Claro. And that can result in really interesting looking wood. But back to carving. The walnuts were a lot harder than the cherry to carve, which of course makes sense since they're harder woods. And I was trying to create a similar design on all handles. First carving out four sides, and then creating facets on the corners. After that I did the maple. And I must say, carving the burl was quite challenging. When carving this I found that some parts were super hard, and then other parts where the grain wasn't as crazy was pretty smooth. Next Ipe. And isn't that tree just beautiful? I was curious how Ipe would carve, and getting bigger chunks off was really hard. However, to do shallow cuts with the grain wasn't as difficult. You can definitely feel the silica in here though, and it is just so much harder than the other woods. And lastly, the purple heart. And you know what, I felt like this was <laughs> even worse than the Ipe, so difficult. I was thinking to myself as I was carving this one that if I wasn't doing this video, I would totally scrap the purple heart because it was not cooperating with me. It was really hard and I felt like throwing it in the burn pile. <laughs> but here we are, all carved. Now they all had holes in the back from the lathe and I figured it might look nice if I filled that hole with some brass. Here's an 8 inch rod. So making sure the pieces will fit. And then epoxy them in. A few hours later, I put in the files and these were pretty snug, so I just inserted them. However, you could always epoxy them in for extra strength. Finally, I finished all the handles with some of my tongue oil beeswax polish, which uh, I make and also sell in my shop if you'd like a tin. And uh, that really brings out the color in all the different woods. Now I wanted something to keep these in, so I decided to build an organizer. I wanted a vintage style holder, so I went with some white oak, which I picked up at a really cool local lumber store here in Oregon. So if you're in the general area, you can take a look at the description and I'll leave their address there. I wanted a very simple style here, so I just went with butt joints that I glued together. Nothing fancy. Once the glue was pretty dry, I drilled some holes and added some really nice looking brass nails. And I also put on an antique brass style label holder, which I think adds a really nice touch. And then I finished the organizer with some more of the wax polish. So I always think it's fun to try out different kinds of woods. And I mean, I've turned different woods before and they all are a little different, but I haven't carved different hardnesses and it really makes a big difference depending on the kind of wood. And I was really kind of going for this faceted look here, kind of combined with the round turning and I, I kind of like that, so that was fun. Um, but then I also needed somewhere to store them and I wanted some place like an organizer to hold like my pliers and pencils that I access often here in the tinker corner in addition to that. So I thought, okay, I should just build one thing to hold everything and I felt like doing something that had more of a vintage style feel so I went with the white oak and uh, a label holder and then it's gonna sit right up here and I like how that's kind of nice and sturdy so that way I can just access whatever I need and it's right there so that worked out really well 
So yeah, that's about it for this time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really uh, had a good time baking this one. I love small organizing things in general. I want to really thank my patrons over at patreon.com for supporting my work. I really appreciate it. Um, and each week I put out a private Patreon vlog where I go over a little bit about what I've been doing, uh, what's been going on, that kind of thing. So if you would like access to those and if you'd like to support the work that I do here, you can check out my page and I'll put a link in the uh, description below. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.